Good afternoon to you, Neil. Well, the former Crown Prince has been very vocal for a long time trying to explain and raise awareness on why this regime needs to be removed. His father, the Shah, the entire family had to leave Iran roughly 40 years ago when Islam, uh, the Islamic Republic uh, became the new state. In our time with him sitting down and talking about some of the most recent events that, that we've dealt with, um, he talked about the U.S. killing of General Soleimani. He talked about Iran's response to that. And I asked him, is it possible for them to have really de-escalated things? I asked him, is it possible to bring them to the negotiating table in a real way and make progress? Listen to what he said, Neil. You know, the president said he doesn't want to go to war. He wants to bring them to the negotiating table. Explain to my viewers why it's impossible to negotiate with this regime. Any standing down by the regime, whether it is having had to somehow respond, not to lose face, but at the end of the day, caving into to pressure may be, in fact, a path to its ultimate collapse. The question is, do you think Khamenei doesn't realize that by giving up more and more, he's accelerating the pace of collapse? And if so, do you want to assume that the regime is prepared to voluntarily leave, which is the challenge the Iranian people face? Pahlavi, this is really about the people standing up, having international support, not just from the United States. He praises the president for that, for taking a different stance than the Obama administration did, but having global support uh, to really make the change here. He says it's not really about war. This is about the people, and they're ready to do it. The conversation was particularly meaningful to me, Neil, because my mother came here from Iran in the 70s to study, and she could never go back to her country. When I asked her why. She said there was nothing left to go back to. Um, interestingly enough, just about 20 years ago, around the year 2000, uh, we ran into the former queen of Iran on the street. And my mother hesitantly approached her, but they did have a conversation. They exchanged a dialogue. And they just started crying because they both didn't have a country. And they were hoping that in the future something would change and they would both be able to uh, see that change actually happen. So yesterday, talking to the Crown Prince about this, his passion, his fervor, his love of the people, um, and seeing the social media response when I promoted this interview was particularly interesting. All the love out there. The Iranians really are like us. They want a democracy. Uh, they want to be able to have fair elections. And he actually said he doesn't want to be the king. He wants to be an advocate for change and he wants to help advise in that process. The last thing I'll say, Neil, is that um, I have this pin he gave me. Uh, he wears it on his lapel. It's the former Iranian flag and uh, hmm. he gave me this to give to my mother. That is amazing. I uh, yeah. believe what has changed in those 40 plus years since uh, the fall of the Shah, of course, Ayatollah Khomeini. Um, sometimes history keeps repeating itself, but this time maybe, maybe not. Jackie, thank you. That is fascinating. Sure